And still on the conflict in Gaza, the World Health Organization says hospitals are not spared in the unrelenting war in Gaza, and neither their staff nor persons sheltering there. A WHO spokesperson, Tariq, unveiled his organization's data, which indicates that more than 350 healthcare facilities, which uh, include 27 hospitals and 90 ambulances, have been attacked and damaged in Gaza since hostilities erupted. According to the agency's spokesperson, a total of 645 people have died since October 7, with another 818 injured in the war has documented 721 attacks on health care in the occupied Palestinian territory since October 7. Out, out of those 721, 357 attacks in the Gaza, resulting in 645 fatalities and 818 injuries. Health facilities uh, are protected under international humanitarian law, uh, and we keep really repeating our appeal to all parties in the conflict to respect that, that, uh, that health workers, ambulances, hospitals, patients should, should, ne should never be a target and should be protected. The IS, ISF also claimed that one of them had a gun, a claim denied by hospital staff. No change of fire was reported. Under applicable international human rights law, firearms may only be used when strictly necessary to prevent an imminent threat to life of serious injury and is otherwise unlawful. Article 53 of the Fourth Geneva Convention. And still on conflict in the Middle East, Iraq's Foreign Minister Dr. Fuhad Hussein has expressed fear that his country could be pushed into a conflict through uh, U.S. retaliatory attacks on its territory precipitated by the activities of Iranian-backed militias. Dr. Fuhad says he is hoping both sides will stop the attacks because Iran is paying a very big price caused by U.S. airstrikes on its soil. In about one week, a wave of U.S. airstrikes have killed 17 fighters of Iranian-backed armed groups. A missile attack on a commander, Abu Bakr al Sadi reported they turned his jeep into a fireball on a residential street in Baghdad. And this attack was condemned by the Iranian government as a clear court assassination. We're still watching the world now on TVC News. We'll be back with more stories around the world after the break. Stay with us. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. Voted as the best TV station of the year, TVC News breaks into the core of every event as they happen following all nationwide big and impactful stories. Without the news from every perspective, covering every human angle, I am Veronica, bringing you the news you would want. Welcome back and to our updates on the Russia-Ukraine war. 
An overnight Russian drone attack has reportedly killed at least uh, seven people, including three children in the east uh, city of Kharkiv. This is according to government officials. The regional governor says three children aged seven, four and six months were among victims of the strike, which hit at least 15 houses causing large-scale fires. Now, this comes at a time President Volodymyr Zelensky is insisting that Ukraine's military leadership needs change. And for this reason, the General Alexander is now the Commander-in-Chief of Ukraine's army. We have your reports. Dear Ukrainians, the 700th day of this war, a very difficult day. First, I summoned Umarov, Zaluzhny, Shaptala, Budanov and Maliuk. They reported on the situation with the aircraft and the exchange. It is obvious that the Russian President Volodymyr Zelensky says the Ukrainian army needs changes. According to him, there is now a feeling of stagnation in the southern directions of the front line and difficulties in the battle in the Donetsk region. For these reasons, new cadre in top management positions are to start a new phase of the war. He has appointed General Oleksandr Sriski, previously commander of Ukraine's ground forces, as the new commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine. He's taken the job at a challenging time for the soldiers. General Sriski is famous for leading the defense of Kyiv in the early weeks of Russia's full-scale invasion and the successful Kharkiv counter-offensive in 2022. The defense of Kyiv was a shocking upset that surprised many who assumed the capital would fall quickly. But the victory... General Sriski was given the Hero of Ukraine Award. While it was being celebrated for the wins, the general faced criticisms for expending manpower and resources in the Battle of Bakhmut in 2023. He is considered to be less popular than his predecessor, Valery Zaluzny, a soldier with 30 years of military service, whose approval ratings rivaled even that of President Zelensky's among the Ukrainian people, but he is recognized as a capable leader. Now let's talk politics. In Pakistan, two ex-prime ministers are claiming victory in an election that has defied expectations. But Pakistan's army commander is asking the country to leave anarchy and polarization behind. With most results counted, independence candidates linked to jail, the former prime minister Imran Khan has reportedly won most seats, but Mr. Nawaz Sharif Another former uh, prime minister widely seen as having the army's barking as arch orders to join him in a coalition. Officials have also rejected Western criticism of how the election was run. And with no clear outcome, General Asamonio called on all parties to show maturity and unity, saying the politics of polarization does not suit a progressive country of 250 million pe people. In Senegal, the Secretary General has urged uh, national stakeholders to engage in dialogue, uphold a peaceful political environment, refrain from the use of violence, and to ensure the holding of an inclusive and transparent presidential elections within the framework designated by the Senegalese Constitution. United Nations spokesperson says the world body will continue to support the consolidation of democracy and promotion of peace, stability, and development in Senegal. The Secretary General is closely following with concern the developments in Senegal. The Secretary General urges national stakeholders to engage in dialogue, uphold a peaceful political environment, refrain from the use of violence, and to ensure the holding of an inclusive and transparent presidential elections within the framework designated by the Senegalese Constitution. The Secretary General reaffirms the United Nations' commitment to continuing to support the consolidation of democracy and promotion of peace, stability and development in Senegal. In Africa, UN humanitarians are warning that a staggering 700,000 children in Sudan face the worst and most life-threatening form of hunger after 300 days of war. 
Earlier this week, the UN Aid Coordination Office appealed for $2.7 billion to meet most urgent needs inside Sudan. But the appeal is just the 4% funded. This is the part repeated their warnings about the scale and severity of hunger and displacement crisis. More than 700,000 children are likely to suffer the most dangerous form of malnutrition this year. Uh, UNICEF won't be able to treat more than 300,000 of those without improved access and without additional support. In that case, tens of thousands would likely die. There's been a five-fold increase in verified cases of killing, sexual violence and recruitment from a year ago. That equates to a terrified number of children killed, raped or recruited. Uh, and these numbers are, of course, the tip of the iceberg. These babies can recover very quickly. If, if, there is a, if there is a possibility to provide them with therapeutic feeding, babies in a matter of few days can go from the brink of death to, to, to be playing in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in these centres. And finally, on the news, Prince Harry has reached a financial settlement with Mirror Group newspapers over the remaining part of his phone hacking claim. In December, a judge ruled that the prince's phone was hacked by the Mirror Group newspapers, uh, the publishers of the Daily Mirror, and awarded him more than £140,000 in damages. As the judge has said only this morning, we have uncovered and proved the shockingly dishonest way in which the Mirror acted for so many years and then sought to conceal the truth. In light of this, we call again for the authorities to uphold the rule of law and to prove that no one is above it. That includes Mr Morgan, who as editor knew perfectly well what was going on as the judge held. Even his own employer realised it simply could not call him as a witness of truth at the trial. And that's the word now. For more updates on the stories we are monitoring, you can visit our website on www.tvcnews.tv. You can also follow us on our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and on X at TVC News NG. On 